Welcome, welcome back. Hi, my name is Tracy and welcome to my home here in Sussex, England. This week it's all about lamps. We all love a lamp, we all have a lamp. They can be very expensive to buy and as our decor tastes change, we really don't want to be spending lots of money on them. So this week it's all about making over the lamps that we already have. I'm going to be showing you a few different techniques that I use to breathe a whole new lease of life into the lamps that I already have. So first up is a lamp that I've had living in the kitchen for the last few years. If you saw my recent video on kitchen decorating, you'll have seen me take it out. Now this used to be very sparkly, very silver, very luxe, and it lived in the corner of my kitchen in my last house. When we did the renovations here, I decided I was going for a more industrial, rustic vibe. So I stripped it all back, took the covering off the shade and covered it in rust spray, which I've now completely gone off. So it's time for a flip. I do like the shade as it is, but I am going to do something with it. So I'm going to take it off, set it to one side. I'm not going to add fabric to it though. Normally the flex I'd protect by putting into a bag, taping up, but I don't need to do that because I'm going to do something else. My favorite wall filler is out. It's a rapid set, so it should go off pretty quickly. The soil, I'm going to be using this, the cayenne pepper, which is quite a new ingredient for me, chilies, which I introduced on my last video. Oh, the sell-by date, please don't judge. And my latest secret ingredient, chives. Never used these before. This is a first time. Look at the sell-by date on that. I'm sorting my spice drawer out, so lots of them are coming out into my projects because I really don't like waste. Now, if you're new to my channel, you must be wondering what the heck is going on here. If you're a regular, then you will know. But let me explain. Basically, I've devised a method for creating a faux stone pot effect using wall filler and then creating texture by adding soil and just recently various herbs and spices. I've been using this faux stone pot effect on various vases, different vessels, and I'll link some of the videos in the description box below. So when it came to lamp makeover time, I thought, why not? If it can work on a pot, why can't it work on a lamp? Couldn't think of a good reason why it wouldn't work, so this is what we're doing today. As this is a rapid set compound, I tend to work in sections. So I'll go through each of the processes in each section and then move on to the next one because when it dries, it will dry very hard. I've just added the chives here, so it'll be really interesting to see what kind of effect that creates. This cayenne pepper, I am just loving this at the moment. I couldn't eat it anymore, but the effect that it is making, I can see me using this in Christmas decorations as well when I'm revamping some of the baubles. So look out for that video coming soon. Turn on notifications as well because I don't always post on the same day or at the same time. And if you don't want to miss any, always best to hit that bell and have notifications on. So the herbs and spices have created lots of interest there, lots of texture. Now this is in its wet state, it will dry a lot lighter. So what to do with the lamp holder? So you could paint it, you could wrap it, you could wrap with string, with twine, with wire. But with this one, I'm going to just take a small paintbrush and use some of the mixture, making sure that the frame will still fit on. So I also want to make sure that the clicky clack, the rocker switch will go backwards and forwards. Although to be honest with you, this one, I think I'm gonna plug into the wall and switch it on and off from the wall socket. Touch up the lamp holder when the whole job is completed. And the same for the ring that holds the light shade in place. I'm not quite sure whether I'm gonna use this or not. We'll decide later. Having left this to dry overnight, I've woken up to a typical English summer, pouring with rain. So it's into the kitchen we go for the next stage. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I don't like flexes and I do like to hide them. I like to wrap them with string, with coir. You could also use wool, you could use yarn. 
Uh, there's great faux wools out at the moment, which would look lovely wrapped around a flex. You know, I like to take the flex and use it as a feature rather than trying to hide it. I'm going to use coir for this lamp because it's quite a chunky lamp. So therefore I want a really chunky twine. I start by making sure I've got a good strong end. So if there are any wispy loose fibers, just snip those off, but keep them in a pile though, because if you ever get any gaps, you can always use those to fill in. With the glue gun, I start by putting quite a bit of glue at the beginning to get a really strong fixing and wrapping it tightly around the flex. And I keep pushing up as well because you don't want to see any of the flex showing through. And that is pretty much it. You just wrap and wrap and wrap until you come to the end. Or if you need to join up two pieces, just lots of glue, lots of pressure. Make sure that it dries nice and solid because obviously you don't want to let go and suddenly it all unwinds. And this wrapping technique is not just for flexes, I've done a chair. I picked up this metal chair from auction for about £10 some two or three years ago and I wrapped it and it has held. So it's such a simple technique to make a piece just stand out from the crowd. Onto the light shade. Yes, you've probably guessed I am going to wrap that as well. It's a great way to use up all those odds and sods, all those little bits of leftover material. The reason being is that you've got quite short runs, so you can work in any sequence that suits. And it's exactly the same technique. On to some styling. Well, it wouldn't be a rural refurb video, would it, without some styling? So this is the corner that it came from, so I think it should go back in there. I've got lamps in all four corners of the kitchen, and I do like it as that extra layer of lighting. I am putting the shade ring back on, and because I didn't go too heavy with the mixture, I am able to actually screw that in position. A nice LED vintage effect bulb, I think just finishes the look and the colours in that bulb work beautifully with the lamp. As the lamp is creating such a statement at the other end of the dresser, the hutch, this arrangement here, this vignette, it just looks too small and too biddy, so it's got to come off. I'm going to shop my home for 
a big boy, something that's going to have some impact, some statement to it. And he can be joined by another couple of friends. And I think that simplicity, the colours, the tones just work so much better. And for those of you that saw my last kitchen decorating video, you'll know that a few things have switched around. So the hutch is styled slightly differently. The big white candelabras that were on the hutch, I've now brought those onto the table. The hydrangea has gone back out into the garden and Big Mo, Mahogany Mo, is pretty much dressed exactly the same. And if you missed that video, I'll link it in the description below. On to the next lamp. This little silver number was picked up at TK Maxx some years ago and it's used as a bedroom lamp. It's not my colourway anymore so it is time for a change. I am going to use a different technique on this. I'm not 100% sure which way I'm going to go but the flex will be wrapped. I do know I don't want to be able to see any silver so I am going to give it a spray. I've got an old can of black gloss acrylic lacquer so after I pop some tape in over the electrodes because obviously I don't want any spray in there I'm going to blow it over with the black paint. Now this is gloss. Oh, I've had it for years and years. I'm terrible. I just hate waste. So it's a great way to use up old paint. But if you're going out to buy paint, I would say go with matte. I think matte just gives a better finish and forms a better base. Now I'm going to go over the black paint with some rub and buff and to get into all those little fiddly areas I've got an old paintbrush as well. Now you can wear gloves to do this, you could do this with a cloth or you can use your fingers. It will come off if you wash with warm soapy water, it won't come off with cold water. Now I'm not trying to go for absolutely 100% full coverage with the rub and buff. I want a few little bits of that black to show through. If you wanted it completely gold, then I would suggest you just use spray. Oh, the pepper's out again. I just love this stuff. This is a complete experiment. You are with me on this journey. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm trying to dab in some of the pepper just to create that buildup of rust that you see. But it's not working too well because the rub and buff is drying so quickly. But anyway, I'm going to push on and let's just see where we get to. Okay, the inside of this shade is looking a bit pants, so I'm going to blast it with some gold spray. I think the rub and buff is great when you've got a textured finish, but on the smooth it's not working so well. So the dark wax has come out because I'm trying to create that old vintage metal feel and the dark wax is doing it so much better. So I'm going to put some more onto the base with a rag and just dab it and keep working it in, working it around, leaving some bits proud. I'm not rubbing in hard because I don't want to buff the rub and buff. I don't want it shiny and I'm not giving up on the cayenne pepper. I'm going to sprinkle it and let it dry overnight. The outside of the shade is taking the rub and buff quite well because there is a slight texture to it. So I'm going to finish that with the wax and then I'm going to leave the whole thing to dry overnight and then we're going to start working on the flex. This time I'm going with a much thinner coir because it's a much smaller lamp. In theory, I could have gone with something much thinner, but I do like things quite chunky. So I'm quite happy with the compromise on this one. 
All that's left to do is style it now before I show you the final lamp. Now this lamp is the very first piece of home decor that hubby and I bought together. It came from a shop in Covent Garden, it predates children and it's had many transformations. Oh my gosh, that was not one of its better ones. Since its rust makeover, it's been sat in the boot room and tucked away and I think now it's time to give it a facelift and bring it out and give it its full glory. I'm happy with the wrapping on it. There's no sense in changing it. So I'm just using a bit of parcel tape only because I've run out of masking tape and I do want to protect it. I'm going to go over with my faux stone mix. And so by now you are complete professionals. You know exactly what I'm doing here. So I don't need to show you all the stages again. I'm going to leave this to dry overnight, but before I do, I will be removing that parcel tape from around the top. I'll just run a blade around the edge and ease it off. I did also bag up the cord in order to keep it clean. So now the big question, where to put it? As I said, I have lamps in all four corners of the kitchen. And this is one of the pair that I did a makeover on a couple of years ago. They were bought from auction for very low money. I stripped the shades, did the wrapping, and then on the base, I used a mixture of paints and builder's sand to create the texture. The twin sits over in this corner, but I'm thinking now I am going to switch these around so my newly revamped lamp can come into this spot in the kitchen. And this one, I think I am actually going to do a makeover on it, but that's all for another day. So in the meantime, that can go down to the boot room. And my 30 odd year old boy can come and take pride of place in the kitchen. He's got a nice little rocker switch here switch him on and off. I'll be able to have my morning coffee in the autumn with him there all lit up and remember all those years ago in Covent Garden when we had our first luxury home decor purchase together. I hope I've given you some inspiration, some food for thought. Don't rush out to the shops, have a look around your house first. You never know what you might find. Thank you for watching and I hope you pop in again next week. Take care.